Well, folks, the Independent Council on Women's Sports, also known as ICONS, is threatening the NCAA with a lawsuit over sex discrimination. ICONS' legal demand letter says, in the world of college sports, it is impossible to provide equal opportunities for both sexes without female-only teams. Yet the NCAA implements and perpetuates a policy of allowing male athletes on women's teams, even as sports governing bodies and federal courts increasingly reject these unjust and inequitable policies that exclude young women from their own teams. Joining us right now to discuss is co-founder for ICONS and NCAA champion, Marcy Smith. Uh, Marcy, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you know, when we have you on, this just seems like such common sense that, that biological males should not be competing. So what kind of progress are you making? Because the, the woke culture, if you will, seems to be stuck on a, allowing trans athletes uh, in women's sports. But it, if you talk to most people, they, they don't like that idea. So are you making progress? Well, I'm happy to report that we're making substantial progress, actually. I was launched into this nine months ago, witnessing Leah Thomas standing on a podium that I once stood. Um, I was a NCAA champion backstroker, and it was one of the greatest highlights of my life. And I saw that robbed of so many swimmers today. And since that moment, I had teammates reach out to me to write a collective collaborative letter on their behalf at the University of Arizona, which the media, you know, took by storm. We have only added to that team. We have superstar athletes like Martina Navratilova, Mary O'Connor, former um, Olympians who have joined the team. We are meeting with sports governing bodies, um, government officials at the highest level, and trying to advocate on behalf of female athletes because we do have a voice and we need to be at the decision-making tables when these policies are being made. As an athlete, and I know at the level that you've competed, uh, nobody works harder. Uh, and I'm kind of curious what you feel, uh, what you go through emotionally when you see a biological male competing in a female uh, event. Uh, Disappointing, to say the least. Um, you know, witnessing the season progress last year, we were uh, honestly living with a sense of denial because I personally had taken for granted Title IX and the capabilities of the NCAA to protect their female athletes. I was assured that somebody would do something to protect these athletes and to ensure fairness and safety and competition. And to see it go all the way to a national title was absolutely devastating. I mean, the tears um, that flowed across, uh, you know, so many athletes over the course of just watching that one individual swimmer um, was devastating. And we, the, the good thing, the good thing that came from that is I think it really galvanized us together to tell us that we needed to take a stand and a bold one. And we have organized um, together in order to demand that the NCAA takes action. Yeah. And, and legally, where does it stand? Because um, it seems like it, it sounds like you're gaining a lot of strength adding people on your side who have great public prominence. The arguments that you have for most of us, I would say those that watch this network, are common sense. Uh, but legally, it's been kind of weird because you've had certain things upheld for trans athletes. So does it look like eventually down the road, this is all going to work out? And as you say, Title IX, which goes back to the 70s, and it's supposed to look out for females, not trans athletes, but females, does it look like you're gaining um, uh, power and a position legally that you can actually win this down the road? We are just starting to see lawsuits bubbling up on this issue. It is a more recent um, apparent problem that has progressed just over the course of the last few years. Um, the Connecticut high school runners have started that. Um, but we need athletes to come forward to bring lawsuits. And that's one of the 
positions that we at ICONS have decided to take. You know, if the um, sports governing bodies like NCAA are not going to take uh, our um, voices into account, then we need to bring lawsuits to legally compel them to do so. Title IX has been in place for 50 years. This is not a novel concept. Sex-based rights is a right for women in this country. So for the government and, uh, you know, powers that be to try and bully and threaten women not to stand up for our rights and ask for mis permission to demand sex-based right. rights in sports, um, this is not a new thing. We need to defend this in law and in the courts, and we will. Yeah. Uh, we are starting to win. Momentum is on our side. Well, good luck to you, Marcy. I think a lot of people are on your side, and I, for one, am hoping that one day we'll look back on this era and it's like, what were they thinking? But we got to get to the other side, and efforts like yours and icons uh, are, are going to help us get to the other side of this. Marcy Smith, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. Your retirement funds are being threatened with even more losses from record inflation, recession, and skyrocketing interest rates. Fortunately, the highly trained specialists at American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. If you call them right now, it's a special offer. They will give you a free gold coin on your first qualifying order, so don't wait. Call 866-935-4309. That's 866-935-4309 or text Newsmax to 65532. That's Newsmax to 65532.